Coming up, I'll tell you all about Sick Beard. No, 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 that's not my nickname for my awesome beard. It is a program that's a self-proclaimed PVR for TV releases on the internet. And I'll tell you all about it in this week's episode of An In-Depth Look. Okay, what is Sickbeard, really? Think of it as a PVR application for TV releases on the internet. At least, that's what it considers itself. That's what they say on their website. What it really is, is a server-side app that you'll install on pretty much any operating system you want, and it will monitor for TV releases on Usenet, and then it can automatically download their NZB files, or it can actually do torrents as well, and then hand it off to your download client of choice. Once you've done that, it'll wait for your download client to finish, and then it will transfer back to Sickbeard, manage the file, rename it, and organize it in the way you like, and store it in a final location. That is if you want to use it for nefarious purposes. But Sickbeard can actually be used for just good old clean organizational fun as well. If you point Sickbeard over to your file structure, it can go through and identify, say, TV episodes you might be missing from your legitimately backed up DVR copies from a TiVo or something like that. Now here's an example of, uh, of an eight season show that uh, I happen to be missing a few parts from season seven. I didn't realize my collection was incomplete and now Sickbeard has gone through, it's matched up that TV show with TVDB metadata, found the missing spots, told, tells me their episode number and their episode title, and if I want to go down the path of the dark side, it will, if you do a little configuring, search Usenet and download the files for, well, or at least download the NZBs for you. That's pretty powerful, but I was honestly ready just to let Sickbeard pass by because to me it seemed like, A, overpromise, can't really do that, can't be done, B, it's an alpha, so why do I want to waste my time on an alpha, and C, it would be too much hassle to set up. But an email from a viewer named Alex made me change my mind on that and finally got my button here. So Alex wrote in and he said, Yo, Chris, have you heard of Sickbeard? I don't quite get it but it sounds like it could be really handy. Oh, and do you know if it runs on Windows? Well, Alex, it does in fact run on Windows, and for this demonstration, I set it up on a Windows box. Now, what Sickbeard really is, the way, the way they get away with calling themselves a PVR for the internet is it's a smart, intelligent server-side application that monitors for new releases of TV shows and then downloads the ones you have predefined to automatically download. And I guess I, should, I shouldn't get ahead of myself. I should be careful. Sickbeard itself doesn't actually do the downloading of the TV episode. Sickbeard monitors for releases and figures out when they come out. And here I'll show you. Here's an example of my screen. I just set this up just for demonstration purposes. I wouldn't actually download these TV episodes. But you see here I have The Daily Show with John Stewart selected. And it's identified when the next release is out. And it also will tell me how complete my collection is of The Daily Show, which is kind of neat. And it also tells me if it's an active series or if it's a discontinued series, like a couple of the ones I have here at the bottom. And what, will, what, what Sickbeard's responsibility is in this scenario is it will download the information file that my download client of choice needs to kick off the download. So Sickbeard's kind of just a, a middleman, right? It hooks, it, hooks you, it hooks your download client up automatically with the file. And the download client does the download. And then Sickbeard sits back, sits, back, sits back and says, oh, looks like that file's done now. I'll just go grab that renames it however you want to put that and however you want that to be formatted. Maybe you like your episode's title in just a specific way and then goes and sticks it in the final destination and can even write metadata and album art and things like that to the file. That's, that's just sort of a tip of the iceberg. One thing to note too, Alex, is that because uh, Sickbeard here uh, lists the uh, episodes that I'm missing in a collection, that's a great way for me to know just what episodes that uh, I've missed from my TiVo. Because I think probably a lot of you are familiar with TiVo's ability to back up TV shows off the hard drive and save them to a network volume. But if TiVo didn't catch all the episodes or you started that later, you might be missing some of them and Sickbeard will help you just identify those. Of course, Alex, again, that's just if you want to use it on the light side. If you want to turn things up a notch, Sickbeard's real powerful feature is the fact that it can search Usenet indexes. Now, what is Usenet? I'm not really allowed to say. That's kind of like the first rule of Usenet. I've already said too much. But I'll hook you up with some information. If you go over to the show notes, I've got a tutorial from my Usenet provider of choice, Giga News, who I've used for five years. And there's no plug there, although they totally should sponsor the show. 
uh, but they have a great page up. They call it like the Giga News University that tells you all about Usenet. I don't want to be the one who spills the beans. But let's just say there's services out there that allow you to connect encrypted, and it's not a public tracker. The problem with some of these torrents out there is they're public, and people can find out who's connected and downloading what. Whereas Usenet is just a direct client to server to relationship, and that entire transmission can be encrypted, so it's a little safer. I'll just leave it at that, because Usenet is just a great thing for all kinds of different uses, not just piracy. Sickbeard's main advantage is that it can take advantage of Usenet searches and indexes, and then pull things off of Usenet really fast, and that's extremely powerful. I would say, though, if you want to set it up on Windows, you would be blown away with how easy it is to configure. Let me show you just really quickly how simple it is under Windows to get Sickbeard up and running. Now to be fair, Sickbeard's pretty straightforward to set up on Mac or Linux. I'll include some tutorials in the show notes. Under Windows, I don't even need to include a link. It's ridiculously easy. You download the binary off the Sickbeard website, store anywhere on your system that you want to have Sickbeard installed at. There's no actual installer. You just unzip the folder. Uh, so for in my case here, I'm doing this on a Windows home server that I, I beat around for specific tasks just like this. It's kind of like my dumping ground. And once you download Sickbeard, you just run the executable, sickbeard.exe. In fact, I would even add that to your startup group or something like that, because once you're done, Sickbeard's up and running. At the first time it launches, it'll open up your web browser to the Sickbeard web page. Uh, that's what I was showing you a little bit earlier. This web page here uh, will only come up once, so bookmark it if you don't if you don't know your own IP address and the port number it came up on. Just save yourself the hassle, don't lose it, and bookmark it. Once that's done. You just have to plug in the basic information and it'll start going out indexing and downloading right away. It can even manage your back catalog and download all of those ones. Again, there's some morally questionable things you're doing there, but it is a pretty impressive um, utility. And it's open source. It's free, which is really incredible. And that brings us to the end of this week's broadcast. Thanks to Alex for writing me. I'd love to hear your ideas, especially if you have other tools like Sickbeard. Hit me up on one of the social networks that I lurk. You can find links to those over at bit.ly slash Chris Fisher, or you could email me, Chris at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Now, next week I've got a show coming up that uh, is technical, so uh, prepare your brain buckle for that. Now, I'll admit, I was sort of laying some groundwork with this episode. You'll see that play out in the next few episodes of an in-depth look, and... Down the road, I even have a few ideas to tie in with a few other shows on Jupiter Broadcasting. So be sure to go over to jupiterbroadcasting.com every Saturday to get a new episode of an in-depth look. Or while you're there, why not just subscribe to one of the RSS feeds and get this show automatically when it releases. Uh, I also, I think I'll address a, a fairly frequent comment. And uh, honestly, I kind of expected this because, well, I'll just explain. A lot of you have said, Chris, I don't get why you call it an in-depth look if it's only about 8-10 minutes an episode. I don't actually have a fixed time for the in-depth look episodes. What, the, what I meant with the name was that uh, I just would focus on a single topic and then go into depth in that topic however much I felt that particular topic warranted. And I think you'll see that play out. Down the road, I'll have episodes that are a little bit longer. Last week's episode was 11 minutes. This week's episode, I have no idea. Uh, and then some episodes will have various lengths and various detail and etc. But I think for now, I want to keep them moving fast. I like having something that's a little bit shorter for you guys to watch over at Jupiter Broadcasting from time to time because most of our shows are a much longer format, so it's nice to kind of break it up. But the topic will always dictate the length and the depth of the episode, and I always want to hear your feedback. You keep me in line. You let me know what you guys like, and I'll adjust the show format to accommodate that, of course. One last little obnoxious plug, and I only do it because it really does make a difference. If you would like to pick up any hardware or some software that I've mentioned in this episode, I can't really think of any software. But like, for example, the BoxyBox, which I absolutely love, uh, I'll have links to those in the show notes over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. A portion of your purchase does go to Jupiter Broadcasting, and it helps pay the bills. So thanks to everybody who does that. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for watching this week's episode of An In-Depth Look, and I'll see you right back here next Saturday.